Hello and welcome to my code explanation video for my script Xanchi's Magic Door 2.0. I thought a long time about how to explain the script so that you can follow me. And I realized that I cannot um, explain my script in boxes because there are so many boxes that you cannot follow me, I think. So it's pretty easy in the code and this video is directed to an advanced audience so you should be a little bit familiar with writing simple lines of code. So let's jump in the code. I added a version tag. You can see always my version. This is the version 2.0 and the fixed version 3 and it's released today. So I have a few helper functions defined here. This is the, the, the documentation about it. So the get neighbor code gets an adjacent coordinate from a position. So I, I, I put a position as coordinate 0, 0, 0 and a direction like east. And I get back the coordinate um, 1, 0, 0. So it's a pretty um, shortcut to avoid uh, writing multiple times the same lines of code. And I also described my parameters. So you see the starting position is a coordinate and you can simply look at this in the documentation. You have the coordinate and that's uh, the, the syntax for creating a coordinate. So it should be really clear to you what I mean. And this is a union type. So you can put north, east, south or west with our which are keywords for the directions north, east, south, and west. You can also use strings in lowercase. So, and you can get back a coordinate. And um, if you put everything else than north, east, south, or west, you get your starting position back. So I um, copy the starting position to my target position, and then I make simple mathematics, and I bring you back the target position. So I shouldn't explain this in detail. So then I have a get type from coordinate, which simply uses a constructor for a tile. And I split the position in X, Y, Z because it's needed. I cannot um, create it from a coordinate uh, directly. I have to split it in apart. And to avoid these multiple times, I wrote this function. So you put your position and you can get back a tile. Or if you don't have a tile at this position, you get back null, which means you get nothing. Then I can rotate the direction. It's also uh, the base direction, north, east, south, or west. And you can put left or right. So if you look at the north and you rotate to the right, you get back to west and direction. And I doesn't use a generalized algorithm. Um, it's straightforward to write the few lines of code. So first I defined local variables to make it clear what I mean. So I use more expressed names than initiator or self. So the initiator is the character which interacts with my door. It could be the player or an NPC if you enable the NPC to interact with objects. And self in this case is the door. So we use character and door as synonyms for this. And then I check an exception case if my door has automated closing. You can interact with the door and the door uh, should close later. And if this happens after a map change, I just have the door object, but the door isn't attached to tiles anymore. So the tiles will be null. So I handle this and stop executing the script by simply return it. So I avoid an error expression. Otherwise, you get an exception. So in the next line, I get the door where uh, the tile where the door is attached on top. So this is uh, the, the tiles array, and I get the first index. Um, a grid of 33 by 33 we have uh, on the map. No, at a, a 33 by 33 door attached on a 16 times 16 grid on the map. Uh, the door has multiple tiles, but it's... Uh, not usual and I doesn't handle it because I don't got any compliance about this. So I will do it in the future maybe. 
And then I get the direction from the door. So this is the facing direction. So every, every single object has a face or a front and is uh, expressed in the map with a blue arrow like this. So it's, uh, it's pointing away from my door and in the opposite direction is the field where the player shouldn't stand because otherwise it gets panel and his uh, against his head like this. So this is the facing direction and this is the opposite direction. Okay. So then if the door is pending, I exit the execution. What is pending? So if you interact with my door, I want to avoid I want avoid that you can open the door multiple times and while the script is running you can interact multiple times otherwise. So you, you triggered uh, multiple open animations and um, that can cause glitches. So if I start executing the script I set it to lock so I set pending to true. So I check if it's already true so the script is running then I return and otherwise so by default, if you don't set the property, it's null. And uh, if it's not executing and has executed before, it's false. So it's both are um, catched by the else case. So I set pending to true to mark my script not to execute again until it's finished. So then adjust the direction of the doors. If you have your play, uh, if, you, if you have your place and placed your door in the back of your grid like this. I have to turn uh, to, to invert every single um, direction to make correct assumptions about edges and file, uh, tiles. So I simply inverse the direction of your door and everything is fine now. So then I lock the movement for the player, but I check if it is the player which is interacting with the door. So your player isn't locked when an NPC is interacting with the door. So if the interacting character is the player, I lock the player movement and also the interaction. So you cannot move and you cannot interact with the door while the script is running. So I can be the puppeteer of your character and move your character out of the frame. So then I check if the character stands in the way. So first I check if the property auto move character is attached to the door. Otherwise, I do nothing. So the character stays in the panel, uh, in the frame, and gets panel uh, ghosting through the character. So, but if you set the auto move character to true and the character position is the door position, then I determine the direction where your character should move. So I use a helper and uh, call the, the right direction of your character to make assumptions. And then I check if your character is in the door, then move the character back. Uh, if the character direction, so is the, the door direction. So your character is um, looking in the direction of your door. So the character stands here and is looking to this position and he interacts with this. He cannot stand in front of the door and is in the panel area. I have to go back, so in this way. So otherwise, I check if it's uh, in the front, then I go in the opposite direction, and this handles if the character stands uh, by side. So, and then I turn the character around by setting the character direction to inverse, so the character turns around and looks at the, straight at the door. Okay, then I assume that you have an interact animation because it's the standard keyword. And if you don't use this, you can set a property interact animation overrides. So if you set, if someone set this key, I use the string to determine the name of the animation and overwrite my setting to later play the animation. Then we come to the next. Um, if the door is auto closing, so the open time is defined and the door closes after the, the time amount, which is set as open time. 
and the door is open already, then I play, and it isn't opened, then I play the animation for interaction. So you, your character moves your hand to the door and opens the door. And I do not do this while the door is closing, because if you have an auto-closing, you can be away from the door and your character is in the middle of the house and then he puts his arm in the front and it's very weird. So I don't do this, I just play the opening, uh, the interaction animation at the first interaction with the door. So then I unlock the player movement because the movement of the player out of the frame is finished. And then I make the door blocking. So I determine the positions outside and inside. So I have the position inside already. This is the, the position where the door is attached. And the tile in the door direction, which is this one, or if you have it attached in the back, it's then this one. So it's quite the same, uh, is determined at outside position. And you also can define the set offset when your door isn't attached to the same level like this. And the door, uh, the tile in front is uh, like in this scenario, um, four points lower in the set layer, two points lower in the set layer. So I cannot read this directly when your player isn't standing at this position. And I cannot uh, be sure that it is the case because your player can stay uh, at this position too and interact with the door or here or here or here or here. So I cannot rely on this. So I have to make a, a really uh, um, vogue assumption. Okay. So now we have this and I call the tile from this position to handle the navigation paths. So, and if the user hasn't defined the, its open state of the door, I set it by myself to false because standard, I, a standard door should be closed and you can define it as opened and can uh, change your animation frames to handle this, but otherwise the door is closed by default. Okay, so then I get the door state for later calculations and I set the standard animations for opening and closing the door, which should be open and close in my case. And if someone uses other things, I check the override and the open animation override names so you can define a string with this property. And I use this instead. So you can ha you have the full control about your animation cycles and you can put this property uh, in the game by runtime and make a destroyed door opening and something like this. So I, I thought this should be very nice. So then I check if the, the, uh, the, the designer of the game provides an open sound file name and I check the files to be not null. So the file is found on your directory. And then I play it later and otherwise I skip this. Otherwise we get an exception. Okay. And now we come to the magic. Here is the opening and closing of the door. So if the door is opened, is false, so the door is not opened. I play the animation for the door, which is for opening, standardized open or the overwritten name. <clears throat> then if the sound file is not null, then I play the name of the, uh, the sound by calling the name of the sound file. So this is the override function. If you define the close sound file not null, then I use this. And here I check if the, the file is present. <laughs> So if you defined a pending time, so the property is not null, then I make a wait. So that, that means if you open the door and the door is opening very slowly and you need four seconds to uh, open the door as wide that you can go through the door, I wait the four seconds and the character can uh, cannot go through the door because 
after the waiting time, I modify the navigation type, uh, the modi navigation lines. You can see my guide video to see the, the, the feature. So, and then I connect navigation lines and the block connection type while connecting this is interact only. So um, if I make the door passable, I should block the field inside the door and beyond the panel. So this is, oops, uh, oh, this is from the preview. So it's, uh, I block the way from this tile to this. Okay. <clears throat> Where were we? So play the sound, wait for pending. It's this. Okay. So the block type should then be interact only. So I can use this in a standard case and I have not to set it in each uh, if and else. So, and the door property now is opened. And otherwise, is the door, if the door is already opened, then I play the animation for closing by calling the name, this is a string. And if the close file is found, then I place the close sound. And I modify the direction to interact only, so you cannot go to the door anymore. And the blocking type should be walk and interact. So I release the blocking. So, and then the door is not opened. So here I check if someone sets the property blocks to. So you can define that the door should block. This is a Boolean. And if it isn't null, that should be true or false. Then, no, it shouldn't be true or false. It should be left or right. So, and I rely that the designer put the right words. Otherwise, he gets an exception. So I determine the rotation to get the neighbor. So this is left or right defined in the position. So my door is faced in this direction. So I rotate to the right and I get this one. So that's the trick about this. And then I have the neighbor. And then I get the coordinate from this position, the blocking direction. I get the neighbor in this direction, this is the position, and I get the tile from the position, so I have the field and I can attach the navigation. So, then I check if the door is auto-closing. So if you have an open time, so that your door should be open, cl uh, automatic closing, and your door is already open, then I wait until the open time is away or is gone. And then, if the door is null, because you made a map change in the meantime, I exit, exit the execution. Otherwise, I set the pending property to false, so I release my lock, so you can interact with the script, and I re-execute the magic door script another time. So this, the door is now open and is automatically closed by uh, recalling the script, but not with the player interactions, instead uh, in a timed function. And then I also release the lock. So if you have the map change, if you change the map already, it uh, doesn't make any difference if I release the lock or not because you cannot interact with the door anymore. That is just a relict from uh, the past. So, and then I release the lock and you are able to do the interaction again. So I want to explain this in more detail. So in this position, I make the character moving. And in this position, I assume mean the, I do not assuming the the position of the tiles by saying um, I have a position of the character and I need to know from direction or the player direction or something else. So I get the character position and determining the back tile. So this is the real tile if you move your character back or in the front or right or left. And this is 
uh, determined by the engine itself. So it's the same as you press your arrow keys. So, and if you cannot go to this direction, I get null and then everything is fine and I do nothing. So that's the trick about this. So this is more reliable than uh, uh, my assumption with my helper scripts. So I release this video for now and I hope it's, um, you can understand what I mean and you can follow me. If you have compliance or uh, ideas how I can improve my explanation to be more understandable, um, please write it down to the comments so I think maybe I think about to uh, do the record again. So otherwise, I hope this would help you to build your own awesome scripts and if you want to talk about some ideas about the store script, you can tag me in the Discord channel or write it down to the comments. So feel free. But um, I have to warn you, I have uh, not this amount of time which I need for my plans. So I have to uh, do pretty hard time boxing. Okay. So have a nice day. Have a lot of fun and build awesome game. And Hopefully I see you in the next tutorial series. Bye.